Welcome to Dream Making. Today we are going to make some combat ready, LED powered, magnetically transforming Black Widow staff and batons. And we're going to show you exactly how you can make your own pair with no crazy equipment required. Now I promise you, you can make this. And even if you think you can't, still enjoy the video because every Dream Making video we produce here on YouTube, we give away a pair of what we're making to you, the viewer. So just check out the comments and the video description below to see how you can enter to win a pair of these Black Widow, one of a kind, battle ready, LED powered, magnetically transforming batons. Let's get into it, shall we? This is where it all began. Mark one of the Black Widow batons. Created about a year ago for Seattle Comic Con. The attempt was a very simple, poorly tested version. Of basically a hollow core design with LEDs running up the middle. Everything was just glued together, prayed it wouldn't break, and guess what? It broke pretty much day one. So, <laughs> fractured in multiple locations, uh, didn't survive the shipping after we uh, flew back on the airplane through TSA. And <clears throat> while it was a good effort, had a custom battery pack that was slim enough to fit the handle of the batons, had magnets, they weren't strong enough. The problem is the core was just not going to be able to withstand any drops, any blows of any kind. That was a problem, especially because we do charity events with kids. We like to have the kids uh, be able to handle the props, play around with them without fear of like, oh my god, I just broke black with those batons, right? So this needed a complete redesign. As we can see, Jury Monkey did an amazing model for this online. I took a lot of his design, uh, basically a modular Black Widow baton, but I completely redesigned it to be functional with a fiberglass core. And that was critical because we needed that fiberglass core in order to be structurally sound to actually be combat ready. Like you can swing this thing as hard as you can and nothing will break. That's the goal we had for this build. And I am happy to say we have reached that goal. So enjoy the rest of this video. It's going to be pre-made chapters throughout the whole video so you can skip ahead to watch exactly what you're interested in. And I think you're going to really enjoy it, especially if you try to make one yourself. I had a lot of fun. I really perfected this design. So my hope is when you try to make it yourself, it'll just work the first time. No prototypes necessary. Let's have some fun dream building. Here we have all the 3D parts completed and ready to go. Now all we have to do is do some structural strength testing and make sure the parts are in prime condition before we start printing more batons. There is one more thing to do before we start testing, which is to cut and drill our fiberglass core. This fiberglass core is being made out of a half inch electrical fence posting that can easily and very affordably be picked up at your local hardware store. I got this from Home Depot, and you can get 10 four-foot poles for about $10, which is a really good steal. This fiberglass makes an excellent material for the core of our batons because it is lightweight and strong enough to serve our purpose of being a functional baton that does not shatter, which is the tendency of what you get if you use a core made out of PVC. The only tricky part about using fiberglass as a material is you gotta be safe using it. So use your protective eye equipment your respirator and gloves because fiberglass is made out of tiny little glass fibers interlaced with a resin. So when you drill it or saw it, you're creating a bunch of dust, which is basically going to be glass dust. This can get in your eyes, throat, skin, 
lungs, not good. Wear your safety equipment and be in a well-ventilated area and you'll be just fine. All right, prototyping. This is Mark 22, I would say. This is a functional shatter test. We have a fiberglass three and quarter inch pole. Hopefully it will not shatter against the wood. It's kind of the whole point is to make it shatterproof. That's why we have a few wax. You know, I think that's pretty good. Practice attempt number two is my assistant Black Widow. If you're freeing this swing away. How's it feel? Sturdy. Yeah? Nice. Alright, additionally we're doing a drop test because Mark 1 broke on a drop, so let's see how this one fares. Nice. Want to go again? We want it to get a extra kid proof because kids are very destructive no matter what they do. <laughs> see, I'm pretty happy with that. And that's without the rubber <laughs> casing on it, so the fact that it can withstand direct force on the fiberglass core, I think we're good. Yep. As you can see, structurally, pretty solid. It's too straight as an arrow. No real damage. A few nicks in our 2x4s, but at least we can say no trees were harmed in the making of this film. I think the fiberglass is going to work. And we are now working on the electronic portion of this build. We have all the parts, I think, necessary to complete this build. And let's walk you through how it all works. So, right here we got the chassis, what I'm calling the chassis. It's made out of rubber TPU material. At the bottom we have a cavity that will fit a cylindrical battery pack that holds three AAA batteries, slides right in, like so. Out will pop a couple leads, which will connect to the smart LED chip right here, which will then connect to a little micro switch. Here we go. Yes. He sits right there, he's a good little boy, he clicks up and down. Just turn them on and off, and this will connect the power up to the side main LEDs. Just shoot out the top, wrapping around the fiberglass core, creating a baton. So that's how it works. We'll just dive right on in on how to make it. So one of the big issues with this build was because we wanted to have this simple to use sliding battery pack that allows for quick battery changes, we had to somehow get both the positive lead, which is already up here, and the negative lead to be on the same side. Now, this might be a bit confusing, bear with me, but I made my own custom contact, bad electrical contact, yeah. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna route the negative ground, which is usually down here. We're gonna have it come all the way up here, wrap around the top, and then we're gonna do basically the same thing on this contact point. So we can have the meat in the middle and make a connection. So it might be a little confusing, but we're just gonna jump into it and hopefully it'll make more sense once you see it in action. Now that the battery pack is fully wired up with the negative lead rerouted towards the front, let's take a look at the electrical contact point. Now you may have noticed on the battery pack, the positive lead is springy. This allows for a greater margin of error. So when the two contacts meet, 
they don't need to be perfectly spaced out in order for the positive and negative to make contact. The springiness gives a little room for error so the two can kind of squish and mend together perfectly. So that's good that the positive does it. Now we want to also do it for the negative so we don't have too much cause for concern about the two points meeting at the same time. So we have a spring and we're going to basically do a springy negative contact point. And in order to do that, we're going to chop this spring in half. And I have a shears cutter, which I think should do the job. And the reason why I want to cut it a half is because I don't want that much spring. I just want about half. So go halfway to cut. And now we got two strings to work with. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue that right on there. And that will be our electrical contact point once that's all glued down. Okay, and here we have our finished electrical contact. As we can see, we got the negative lead connected to the spring, positive lead going down the middle, coiled up and soldered to give it a nice middle contact point. We have the battery that also has the negative coiled on the edge, middle down the center. Spring connects with the negative edge, middle goes down that little center contact point they both connect and we should have a circuit bam okay so the next part is to feed the electrical contact point down the battery cavity and pop the leads out the front all right the electrical contact point is in there nice and snug pressure fitted inside electrical leads coming out time to wire up the electric chip let's pop this out and Get in there. Okay, our microchip is freed from its shrink wrapped packaging in order to fit snugly in our custom made chassis. Perfect. Now, on the agenda is to connect up our leads. We're going to take the power battery lead and connect it not to the microchip, not just yet. We're bypassing the microchip and we're going to connect directly to the toggle switch. The toggle switch can then be turned on and off, which allows the power to be disconnected or, or connected, which the power from the other end would then be rerouted back to the power on the microchip board. The negative battery lead will be connected to the negative grounding lead on the microchip. And from there, the power leads and the logic connection wire will be all three routed to the LED strip, which would be this end. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we?
the truth, we are all wired up and ready to go. Let's see if it actually works. All right, we're gonna take the battery, we're gonna put it in the bottom, apply pressure so the springs make contact with hopefully positive and negative leads. And we're gonna press the button in three, two, one. <laughs> nice. That's what I like to see. Full rainbows, we got power. Yes. Okay. Nice. Power off. Power on. Oh yeah. Cool. So we'll finish putting this together and we'll have a finished product soon. <laughs> And here we are, our completed Black Widow baton. I am extremely happy with how this turned out. Looks great, feels amazing. We'll do a strength test in a minute. We got a magnet in the pummel. We'll also test that once we have a second baton. Working custom LEDs with a wireless controller that can change any color we want. I am insanely happy with this. Lots of different patterns and colors. Yeah, this is cool. All right, we got to make three more, one more to finish the pair, then two more to make a pair so we can give away to one of you, the viewers. Let's go do that and do some tests. All right, here we are. We are at full assembly of Mark 22. We're going to do a very scary functional test with the lights going. And we're going to pray it holds up and the lights don't break. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> so much work. So scary. We, we, we want to be fully functioning and kid safety tested. <laughs> oh yeah, that is... Oh. Look at that, like, to have the structure and the electronics woven in, not even like a flicker. I love that. <laughs> Here's our damage report. After a good probably 15 to 20 medium to hard blows, we only have a single minor cosmetic damage at a single link. As you can see, the like the thinnest arm of one of these medium black TPU pieces broke. That is all. Electronics still fully functional. Batteries 100% intact. Controllers, microchips fine. I am super happy with that. And we planned, we designed for this. There is no glue used at all, which means every single one of these pieces just unscrews. And all I have to do is replace this single piece and this is fully back in order again. I love this.
you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Keep an eye out for us this weekend at Boston where I'll be dressed up as Black Widow and my boyfriend will be dressed up as Black Widow. Feel free to say hi. And this wraps up our very first Dreams Maker video. Thank you for staying all the way towards the end. I really hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. We really want this brand new YouTube series to inspire people like you to go make stuff. Go be a builder, be a kid at heart again, use your imagination, and go make something you are passionate about. There has never been a better time to become a maker in your very own home. We have 3D printers like the Ender 3 that are less than $200 and can make amazing stuff like this. We have micro LEDs that are super powerful yet use almost no energy. We have magnets, we have wireless remotes that let you change the color of the LEDs to anything your heart desires. It's never been a better time to be a maker. And I personally was inspired to become a maker because of Adam Savage, the good old Mythbuster and now awesome YouTube creator on his channel called Tested. He makes amazing builds like this for cosplayers and geeks and he's a great inspiration teacher and educator for the scientific community and that's what we hope this channel is for you as well we want to inspire you to go be amazing and enjoy life thank you again to adam for inspiring me to become a maker i really hope we can inspire some of you to become makers as well that is why this series is going to be built on giving as much information as possible so you can build these cool things too we're going to give all the building plans the stl files the building shopping list all the instructions, and of course the how-to videos and how to make all this stuff yourself. In addition to that, we're also going to give away everything we make in the series. We'll have a giveaway. So stay tuned to the channel if you want to learn how to make some really cool stuff. And also win some cool swag in the process. Thank you again for watching. We're going to actually take both the batons and the RT's The Black Widow backpack to Boston Comic Con this weekend. So if you're going to Boston Comic Con, going to be there Sunday, uh, keep an eye out for us. My amazing, wonderful girlfriend's going to be Black Widow sporting the backpack and batons, and I will be Doctor Strange. So if you see us, give us a shout out, say hi. In the meantime, though, as always, have the sweetest of dreams and stay geeky.